All right, today's video, the power of Rottweilers. Now, I had already put up a few years ago a video called the crushing bite power of Rottweilers, showing just like those clips you just saw, when bite work is done properly, if you get in a suit and take bites from Rottweilers, it is extremely painful. Now I've done all breeds for 25 years and I tell every new trainer that comes on to my staff or any trainer that's coming to me to be trained as a trainer, until you feel a Rottweiler in a suit, you haven't felt anything a Rottweiler's power is just unbelievable compared to most other breeds. Okay, so this video today, a friend of mine sent me this video that somebody else had put up called the power of Rottweiler's. Okay, now he sent it to me for two reasons. One, to say, I really, in the video, the stuff that these guys are showing, I cannot tell that the Rottweiler has a lot of power the way they're showing it in the video in bite work. Okay? And also, they added my videos into their video <laughs> and that was the only way that people could tell that the Rottweiler had that kind of power in their bite, right? It was only because the clips of mine that they used in there showed the serious power when it's done right, right? So of course nobody knows that those particular clips in that video were from my video, the crushing bite power of Rottweilers that I trained on those Rottweilers, okay? So, and the only reason bringing that up is because that is going to be the subject of the video today. So, the clips I'm going to show you here, you're going to see this Rottweiler being trained in the suit, and he's probably already trained, so this is the end result, and it looks like he's a police dog. But you're going to see, and I want you to watch over and over again, that the dog is grabbing the suit and pulling away. right? So when a dog does that, you are never going to feel the power of that dog, right? Because you're not letting the dog use his power and show his power, right? So especially if it's a police dog, 
right, or any personal protection dog, we teach me in my system to push through and put that power on to really put a beat down on a suspect or somebody breaking into your home or whatever it is. So we, I do the opposite, right, for that reason. So here in this video, when you see the Rottweiler grabbing the suit and just pulling away, the guy in the suit could take this all day, right? <laughs> He's feeling nothing in the suit. This comes down to how a trainer is teaching bite work. And when it's done properly, right, and in my eyes, that's why people use my videos of shepherds, rottweilers, giant schnauzers. I mean, I find my video clips in everybody else's clips when they're trying to show the power of a breed, right? Because I show the pain, right, the marks on the arms, right? <laughs> All those blood bruises on the arms. Now back, Frank, back. Oh, I got you good? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, damn. Woo! Oh, he got you good. Oh, damn. Mm. Good boy. Ooh. I tried to hold on. Hey, look, go Ow, he's got my arm. Alright, let it go. Should you see if you can suck it? Damn. That was through the sleeve. That's through the sleeve. Man, look at the lump that's growing on there. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was this arm. Okay. Look at Through the suit. And this is all comes down to how a trainer builds the, the bite development. Okay? So, all breeds will punish you and will hurt being taught to push in and constantly push and, and hold, okay? But the Rottweiler, when doing that, just like the other breeds, it is unbelievable and excruciating, <laughs> all right? And also, that's why I've always said, in all my videos, if you follow me, all my protection videos, you always see, no matter what, in all the breeds, pushing into us and always all over us, in us, and putting that pressure down, right? In the chest, in the, there, and pushing in and holding on to us. Right? Not pulling away, putting all that power so we can't escape in the equipment the power of the bites. So here you see the Rottweilers, when they're biting here, you can see that when they bite, the guy's body's going backwards and the Rottweiler's going in and pushing that body, right? Not pulling away. Perfect, perfect. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, my God. Mm. Too bad. Mm. Oh, oh, my God. Mm. Oh, oh. makes a huge difference and I'm telling you you can hear here when he's taking those bites 
That's not fake stuff. That's not just for nothing in entertainment. So, and just so you know, behind the scenes, on those days that we had, uh, those guys were going to take the bites from these Rottweilers, it was every weekend when we were going to, you know, do the bite work with these guys. The decoys that are taking the bites there in the video, nobody wants to take the bites from the Rottweilers. Right? So every time it was a Rottweiler's turn to come up and, and do the bite work, everybody would go, ah, do we have to do the Rottweiler's today? Can we wait for them for next week? <laughs> so everybody always wanted to bypass the Rottweiler's because they hit you in with power in the right spots. I mean, you want to cry. There. <laughs> And we're talking extra equipment, gauntlets, towels, on top of the bulky suit. I mean, you're still not safe. Oh, we have this. Then, and if it was going to be high bites like we were doing, we would put this all the way up to protect that bicep and that inner arm here because it's very painful when they hit you there. I mean, you lose a lot of flexibility in it, but hey, to get rid of that pain, and then we would put the towels over that, and then the thick bodysuit to get in there, and now we're triple done, triple protected. That's very difficult, I mean, for any dog, really. But this is what happens, even with triple protection, with a good biting Rottweiler. Ooh, they have butts. Mm. Good boy. Let's try to hold on. That's how much crazy power is in that jaw and that neck. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Also, why we always say, you see the Rottweiler just briefly just got him up there at one shot in the chest. And this is with extra padding under. And right away, the deco had to stop and throw the suit off because it's excruciating when you get hit up in this area. Right? I mean, the other clips, he's taking them here. <laughs> right? It's still extremely painful. Oh! Oh! Right, but you can see he's hanging in, oh, oh, and it hurts while he moves around. The dog is digging in and pushing, right? But up in here, one shot and one second of a shot, you can't anymore. You gotta let it go. Now, back, Frank, back. Oh, you got you good? So imagine with no equipment, no protection. You get hit from here up in here by a, one of these Roddies, I mean, you are going to faint. I've seen it happen. I've had decoys and people I work with, with shepherds too. <laughs> so shepherds, Roddies, they bite up in this area with that good blow through power like I teach. I've seen decoys in one second that can't take it and they drop to their knees and they turn white and they're in faint mode. Ah, it! Ah, good. Oh, we got you. I mean, so that's why I personally focus on here, in, right, anywhere up to the elbows in real protection work. Because in real life, with no equipment on, I don't care you have gone, they, they nip you even just a little bit fighting. You're going to let go and drop everything because your nerves cannot do anything else but coil and let everything go. It's excruciating. <laughs> All right, so that is why I always explain to everybody 
We don't do sleeve bites in training, only pre-training. My end result in my training is always going to be here in the suits because that target is a game over in one second. I mean, just a touch without a suit on. You are going to cry. So like that Rottweiler was doing there in the suit, if I had a sweater on and I was a, a suspect running from a police dog, or I broke into somebody's house and the dog did bite work that way and I just stick my arm out, they're going to grab. I might feel a good initial pinch right from the initial bite, <laughs> but then the dog is going to pull on that excess and they're going to start pulling you like this, right? So if that happens, most dogs who do tug like that and pull aways, they're not trying to hurt the man. They're not really into that game. It's just a tug of war. So I could just take this off, right? He's already got it. And I just start taking and let him have it, right? And I can try to get out the door while he's tugging on it and then just let him have it and get out the door and shut the door, right? Just in case he came off the, the sweater and he was going to reattack, right? So this gives the person, the suspect, a big advantage when you get a dog who pulls like that on the suits, right? And that usually comes from the way they do sleeve work. So you'll see a lot of times that they send the dog flying, the dog gets the bites, right? And they're pulling and they're trying not to let them pull. Right? And then when they're ready, they let the sleeve go and the dog pulls away and runs around the field with it in his mouth. Right? And that kind of behavior causes dogs to tend to pull a lot when you let the sleeve go from a pull and, right? So that's the reward. Causing, when they get on the suits, like that dog, that Rottweiler in there. And now you have all this excess, right? I mean, you have all this material here. So when a dog doesn't bite deep and hard like my dogs do, right? They're gonna grab that excess and just pull away. So what was happening with the guy there, when the dog jumped in the car and pulled his arm out and jumped in the truck and pulled on him and when the guy was on the floor he was pulling him away right the guy completely avoided all pain and any pressure that that dog had in him because he knows once the dog gets the excess he's not going to dig in and try to hurt the man he's going to grab the suit and play with it and he's going to pull pull and now the whole arm of the guy is here and the dog's got here and here's my arm right and rottweilers don't have a very long nose either right so you see all that excess when the dog pulls if you're a smart decoy, <laughs> right, you just keep your arm all the way back here to avoid the punishment. And you see the dog is pulling, pulling, pull, 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 and there's nothing to me. I feel nothing of that dog. And why? Because the dog is not biting properly. He should not be grabbing the excess and pulling. Right? The dog should be digging in. Oof! There's no way to escape now. That is going to hurt, and I can tell you every day of my life doing protection because I teach it. The other way is to push in and push us backwards. Push and push us backwards and cover us. Push us and push them out as far as they can get into us and to crush down. Right? 
so I have nowhere to go in the suits. So I get punished, right? So when I have them in here, boom, and they push in, and I have nowhere for my arm to go. The dog's got me completely, and I feel all the power of his back mouth, and it is excruciating. <laughs> and so we wrap up good. So that is the difference how you teach bite work causes many different things, okay? And teaching the backwards pulling is a no-no. And in my system, I just put up, and this video happens to come in a week after, that I just put up my video two on protection training dogs, how to train protection dogs, part two. Part two that I just came out with last week is exactly teaching this, the foundation of not to let them pull and how we counter it and then teach them the opposite of how to dig in and push and punish us and not let dogs pull away, okay? kills the bites, kills the game, and it gives aggressor, burglar, big advantage to get out of that game and escape. So, till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer. Oh, that was his arm. Okay. Through the suit.